Well, welcome to Grace Lutheran Church and also welcome to our table. I'm John Hiley, one of the pastors of Grace. I'm here with my wife, Laura Asi, and we're just sitting down to supper. And it's with this that we invite you into the mystery and the wonder of Monday, Thursday, and what it is to meet Jesus in the meal. You see, as we put together our table, as we finish setting the table, we also invite you into remembering the last meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. This meal we so often call the Last Supper. Um, we base our practice of Holy Communion really off of this meal, off of what it means to meet Jesus' body and blood, bread and wine for the forgiveness of sins, for the renewal of the world. What it means to meet God in the mystery of incarnation in body, in a meal that we are invited to share with one another. You see, the bread, the wine, they're where God meets us. And this meal gives us strength as we go into the world to serve one another. See, in fact, during the Last Supper, Jesus told his disciples, I've got a new commandment for you. A commandment that you love one another as I have first loved you. So now think of the times that you've set the table, the times you've brought out the forks and, and put down the plates, and, and the people you've invited, your family, your friends, your neighbors. Think of the ways that setting a table can change the way you think of the meal, how you enjoy it, who you gather with, who you've invited. If others are present, how do you make that meal extra special? What extra parts do you set out to share with them? See, our table is set, but there's no, there's no food yet. And during this time of pandemic, we recognize that many folks will be unable to share a meal with people who they love. And it's a trying time for all of us as we pray about the safety of family and friends, both near and far. And I encourage you right now to take a moment to name out loud the people who you wish would be with you at your table today. I encourage you, if you've got a piece of paper, Write down some of the names of people you wish you could share a meal with this Easter season. See, in our house, we begin each meal thanking God for food. And there's so many different blessings. A lot of the time we sing, but tonight we're going to share a blessing that we have shared with folks at Grace over the years on an open door meal. So come, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Blessed, blessed be God, who is our bread. May all, all the world be clothed and fed. Amen. Amen. So we'll join in a song.
menu tonight, we went total comfort food. In fact, we did takeout comfort food. And we encourage you to do the same thing, whether it's making your own comfort food, food at home uh, or supporting local businesses and getting takeout uh, during this time. Because your comfort food maybe reminds you of times that bring you great comfort, uh, that bring you back to a time in your life. Maybe it's a certain kind of home cooking or a recipe that was passed down to you. We just really encourage you to take delight in, uh, in comfort food during this time of sheltering in place, during this time of quarantine, um, and that it can provide you, your body with sustenance, but also your spirit as well. Today we're going to make one of my family's favorite comfort foods, is manicotti. It's something we enjoy as a family. It's also something we like to share with others when they're going through a time of hardship and they need a little comfort food as well. How's your supper, guys? It's good. I can't hear on this thing, anyways. <laughs> you already did me. Where's my spoon at? Well, hello again, and thanks to Nikki and family. You may be wondering what Jesus and his disciples ate during that last meal on that Thursday night in Jerusalem. Scholars have debated this question for generations. Could have been lamb, could have been beef stew, could have been, could have been lentil stew, fish sauce, sugar, sugar dates, so many things. Whatever food they ate, it was meant to sustain them. Because in the days to come, Jesus' friends would see and experience feelings that they had never known before. Their beloved leader, their rabbi, would be arrested, tried, convicted, sentenced to death, and executed brutally. Taken to court, no, even more. The disciples' whole world turned upside down in the space of a day. Much like ours has turned over in just a few weeks' time. And we eat food to sustain us. Just like Jesus' first friends ate food to sustain them, in those trying times. So let us now listen to God's word and a message from Pastor Nancy. Let us now listen to the story of the Last Supper as told by John in chapter 13 of his gospel. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of the world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, the one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, 
but is completely clean, and you are clean, not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Good evening and welcome to my home and to my dinner table. I too have prepared some comfort food. Let me show you what I've made. Can you tell what it is? It's not fancy and it doesn't take that long to prepare. It's just plain old white rice with a little butter and salt and a glass of milk. And if I can have those things, I am a happy camper. Thanks for joining us in worship this evening. And I do hope that you're able to watch this from the safety of your own home. These are difficult days for our country and for our world. And I know for many of you, you are leaning on your faith in God during this time. So I pray and hope that this will continue throughout the days ahead. And let's all remember that this isn't going to be like this forever. It is a temporary thing. There will come a day again in which we'll be able to walk through the doors of Grace Lutheran on a Sunday morning and greet each other in person. What a day that will be. Keep holding on to that dream. Tonight we observe Monday, Thursday of Holy Week. Of course, we understand what Thursday means, but Monday is not part of our usual vocabulary. Um, Monday comes from a Latin word meaning to command. And so when we put Monday with Thursday, we're actually referring back to that story of Jesus having the Last Supper with his disciples and how he commanded them to love one another. You just heard that story read by me uh, a few minutes ago. Let's listen once again, however, to the final verses. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. <clears throat> If anyone were to ask you what is at the heart of your Christian faith, it's really simple. All you need to reply is love. If you were to take all the articles of faith, the confessions, the creeds, all the books that have been written throughout the years by various scholars and authors and put them all together and distill the essence from them it would be the word love. That is the very essence of who we are as Christians. And thank goodness uh, we don't have to have an advanced degree to understand our own faith. 
or memorize complex, elaborate formulas to explain it to somebody else. It's not rocket science. As one uh, theologian uh, wrote, it is ridiculously simple to understand. That same theologian, however, said, but it is ridiculously hard to do. And isn't that the truth? <laughs> I wonder how the disciples reacted long ago uh, that night that Jesus commanded them to love one another. By this time in the meal, he had Jesus had already washed their dirty feet, which must have gone against every fiber of their being. Uh, great leaders were not meant to stoop down and do such a low and menial task. That was the job for a servant. Soon after doing that, Jesus also announced that there was a betrayer in their midst, their very own midst. The text tells us that this gave them great uncertainty. And now Jesus was telling them that it wasn't merely enough for them to get along with each other. They had to love one another. I can imagine that there were some raised eyebrows, some furrowed fur foreheads, and also some inquisitive looks as they looked around the room at each other. We have to do what? It's one thing to love the people you like, that you get along with. It's another matter when you love, have to love the people that you disagree with or dislike. I'm sure that was at the back of the disciples' minds that evening. Before we go any further, let me say this. When Jesus uses that word love, or actually when John uses that word in his gospel, he's not talking about some interior feeling or emotion, nor is he equating it with romance. That's our tendency in our culture. When we hear that word love, we think of romance and we think of this kind of love as being a little fickle that we have no control over. It just happens. Uh, there's no planning when you fall in love. There's no orchestration. It just happens. We seem helpless to control it. But in John's gospel, that is not the case. Love is an act of will, and it definitely incorporates sacrifice. It's a love that doesn't know any boundaries, and it lasts to the very end. In this case, the bitter end for Jesus. And that's what John wants us to see, that every action, every movement Jesus made that night at the table in that upper room was intentional, was deliberate, was conveying just how generous God's love is. Because everything Jesus did that night was done with the full knowledge that those he cared most about, those he loved, that band of followers that went with him everywhere would soon betray him, deny him, and abandon him. And yet he continued to love them through it all. I can't even begin to wrap my mind around that one. I would think that he would have gotten up at some point during that meal and said, this is a complete farce. I know what's going to happen. I know how you're going to act. And it hurts me. But he didn't do that. Nor <clears throat> did he uh, suggest that what he was doing was a way to atone for anybody's sin 
or to appease an angry God, all of Jesus' actions were meant to convey how deep and how wide God's love is for each disciple, for each of us. For some reason, uh, this text has made me think of that show, Antiques, Antiques Roadshow on PBS. I used to watch that religiously, but I haven't been able to do so in recent years. But uh, there's something fun about that show. When you see people from all over bringing their treasures, large and small, to a major venue in some city to have their treasure appraised and valued. Uh, and it's always interesting to hear the stories connected to those items, how someone may have picked uh, or found something at a garage sale and purchased it for 50 cents, or others who have indicated that uh, what they have is a fa family heirloom that has been given or passed down from generation to generation, or other similar stories. But I think the best part of Antiques Roadshow is when the appraiser uh, begins to point out all these special details of the item that was brought and begin to educate everybody uh, about these uh, hidden things that reveal who made it. And of course, it's absolutely exciting when the person who brought that item begins to realize that what they have indeed is extraordinary because it was created by a master craftsman or it was signed by an important historical figure. Um, it's great to see the smiles break out on their faces or the complete shock take over them that what they have is indeed authentic genuine, the real deal. The same is true for us when it comes to God's love. Jesus is the real deal. He shows us just how much God loves us. It's a love that never disappears it never goes away over time. It doesn't fail us at our worst moments. It is always there. May we too become the real deal for one another, especially through these difficult days. Blessings to you as you continue walking the road to the resurrection. And blessings to you as you continue to shelter in.
wish I had a good meal. Um, I hope you're doing the same at your home these uh, days and evenings together. But before we end our time together, uh, it's a time of prayer, isn't it? Um, not knowing what lies ahead, but relying on our faith, uh, relying on uh, our faith in Jesus and especially what this week means to us. And so we want to take time and pray together with you before we leave the table. So with the whole people of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all people in need. God, we pray for our world today, for every nation and for our nation, for wisdom, for leaders, for strength, for people. Pray, too, for our community, for wisdom here, for strength here, that we may find ways to serve you, that we may find ways to help one another in this time of uncertainty and crisis. Accept our prayers, O oh God. God of all relationship, in this night when we remember your last supper, we pray for families and churches, for our families, for our church. Help us in this time of uncertainty to learn to be in relationship with one another. Help us in this time of uncertainty to know that you are with us. Give us strength to care for one another, to meet each other as brothers and sisters, just as you met your friends one-to-one, -one, face to face, with a heart of compassion. Accept our prayers, O oh God. people we pray today for the sick and the grieving pray today for those whose lives have been turned over by COVID-19 pray today for those who have lost so much livelihoods loved ones we pray that you be with us in our griefs in our pains and that you help us to share your love and your light with the hurting of this world accept our prayers oh God we join in the prayer Jesus taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As Monday Thursday comes to an end, the season of Lent draws to an end. We are now entering a, a special time in the life of the church as we remember the mystery of Jesus coming from life into death, into new life in the resurrection. And so we invite you into the mystery of these days when so much happened in Jerusalem. And now we invite you too to receive a blessing as you shelter in place. May you shelter not just in place, but in peace. And may the peace and comfort of Christ be with you now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I'll clear off the table. My God, my God, why have you deserted me? Why are you so far away? 
Won't you listen to my groans and come to my rescue? I cry out day and night, but you don't answer, and I can never rest. Yet you are the holy God, ruling from your throne and praised by Israel. Our ancestors trusted you, and you rescued them. When they cried out for help, you saved them, and you did not let them down when they depended on you. But I am merely a worm, far less than human, and I am hated and rejected by people everywhere. Everyone who sees me makes fun and sneers. They shake their heads and say, trust the Lord. If you are his favorite, let him protect you and keep you safe. You, Lord, brought me safely through birth, and you protected me when I was a baby at my mother's breast. From the day I was born, I have been in your care, and from the time of my birth, you have been my God. Don't stay far off when I am in trouble with no one to help me. Enemies are all around, like a herd of wild bulls. Powerful bulls from Bashan are everywhere. My enemies are like lions, roaring and attacking with jaws open wide. I have no more strength than a few drops of water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like melted wax. My strength has dried up like a broken clay pot, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You, God, have left me to die in the dirt. Brutal enemies attack me like a pack of dogs, tearing at my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones, and my enemies just stare and sneer at me. They, they took my clothes and gambled for them. Don't stay far away, Lord. My strength comes from you, so hurry and help. Rescue me from enemy swords and save me from those dogs. Don't let lions eat me. You rescued me from the horns of wild bulls, and when your people meet, I will praise you, Lord. All who worship the Lord now praise him. You belong to Jacob's family and to the people of Israel, so fear and honor the Lord. The Lord doesn't hate or despise the helpless and all of their troubles. When I cried out, he listened and did not turn away. When your people meet, you will fill my heart with your praises, Lord, and everyone will see me. Keep my promises to you. The poor will eat and be full, and all who worship you will be thankful and live in hope. Everyone on this earth will remember you, Lord. People all over the world will turn and worship you because you are in control, the ruler of all nations. All who are rich, and have more than enough will bow down to you, Lord. Even those who are dying and almost in the grave will come and bow down. In the future, everyone will worship and learn about you, our Lord. People not yet born will be told, the Lord has saved us. Mm -hmm. 